Hello, this is Superintendent Andy Kowalczyk, and welcome to the April edition of PASD Monthly. The Pink County Schools had some great events for March's Reading Month. Many dress-up days, guest readers, and visits from authors. I love seeing the excitement for reading in March and hope we can continue to read throughout the year. Good readers normally earn good grades and do well on state tests throughout their school career. We encourage parents to read often to your kids and have interesting books for them to read at home. Spring break is March 29th through April 5th. I asked some students what they plan to do on their week off. My name is Luke Charles Coggins and something I want to do over spring break is Fortnite. I'm Justin Lalonde and I'm going sucker fishing for spring break. Nice, where at? Rifle River. Perfect. Um, I'm Ember Brooks and I'm going to my Mimas and Sturgis. I'm Bradley Kilgore and I'm going to Indiana to see my family. I'm Annika St. Peter and I'm going to Manistee to go steelhead fishing. I'm going to Las Vegas and we're going to go take a helicopter ride into the Grand Canyon and we're going to see the Hoover Dam. Hi, my name's Kaysen. Um, I'm going to Florida for this weekend. And what are you going to do? In my dream I was. And I was going to Harry Potter World, but we're really just going to have parties. This spring break, I'm going to Great Wolf Lodge. I have no idea what I'm going to do, but whatever happens, happens. <laughs> I'm Noemi Marie, and what I'm going to do on spring break is I'm going to do some more gymnastics and go up to Cadillac. My name is Michael, and I'm going to do a lot of water parts for uh, Congratulations to our Pink County High School robotics team. Mr. Shireen and Mr. Duby had the team well prepared for the competitions in Traverse City and Midland. Our team performed very well, and we are proud of our accomplishments. I will have an interview with some of the team next month. Our 24-25 calendar is tentatively set for next school year. We have a meeting scheduled with the state of Michigan in May that could alter the start date. We do have a change with next year's graduation day also. Please check back in before the end of the school year for the approved 24-25 school calendar. This month, I was fortunate to interview alumni Jason Morgan. I was Jason's middle school science teacher and was assistant principal while he was here in the high school. Please enjoy my interview with Jason Morgan. So first, this is an easy one. Just tell me a little bit about yourself, some of your hobbies or uh, where you're at now, some of the things going on in your world. <laughs> yeah, well, great to chat with you. Uh, so my name is Jason Morgan, and I uh, live in Ann Arbor, Michigan these days, and I serve as a state representative uh, representing the, the Ann Arbor area and part of uh, Wayne and Oakland counties as well. And uh, yeah, I'm a very proud Pink County grad. That is awesome. So we're, we'll start off with uh, some Pink County things. Tell me what you remember about your time at Pink County schools. Um, and it doesn't have to be high school. I know that's where we kind of always go to, but where did you go to elementary first? Yeah, so I was uh, pin conning uh, schools all the way through. Uh, started at Central Elementary cool. and went through the middle school and the high school and graduated in 2007. Great. So how about your, what are some of your best memories from your time here? You know, thinking back, it's it's been a minute uh, since <laughs> I've been uh, in school here, but uh Okay. I'm actually looking over. I still have my um, uh, Mrs. Buttersworth uh, syrup award. Mm -hmm. I forget what we called those, but uh, I think it was most likely to be a politician or something. Really? So, you know, it worked out. Uh, it was all because of that award, I guess. Um, the, um, but, uh, you know, for me, I think it was just, um, you know, cross country uh, mm -hmm. with Christy Morand was always um, something I look back at fondly. Um, spending time with friends, uh, ice cream at Portals. I still go to Portals whenever I can cool. uh, back in town. Yep. Uh, and I think just, you know, football games on Fridays, really just being, being with people. Um, that was really what I remembered the most from school. The interesting thing you talk about your award tonight is our senior poll awards where students oh. will be getting those. It's, it's so funny <laughs> that you mentioned that because our, our seniors will be getting them tonight. Same kind of thing. So that's cool. That's great. That's a good tradition. Yeah. Um, tell me about your college experience in in your current career. Like how what are you doing now and it, you know, with that college career? 
Yeah, so I went to uh, Northern Michigan University mm -hmm. uh, up in Marquette, Michigan, and uh, loved it, had a great experience, uh, would have, did not plan on going into politics at all, or I probably wouldn't have gone to, you know, the most remote, second most remote school <laughs> in Michigan, had I realized that I'd want to go into politics <laughs> yeah. um, and government. Uh, but it ended up working out amazingly. I, I got really involved on campus and ended up getting a job um, interning for Hillary Clinton in Washington, D.C., and then later getting a job with my congressman up there who represented Pinconning, a guy named Bart Stupak. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just my career just sort of That's shifted and, and took off working in government and who would have ever expected yeah. that uh, all these years later, I'd be a, a state legislator in Ann Arbor, Michigan? Um, certainly not something I would have ever expected, but I'm <laughs> so glad that I'm here. Yeah. So are there some ways that your experiences at Pinconning helped you prepare for the, the experiences in college or in your career now? Yeah. You know, I think in Pinconning, I, um, I just, what I remember most about school was the incredibly supportive teachers. I mean, every teacher I had at Pinconning was really helpful, supportive. They challenged you, but yeah. were were pretty reasonable as you were trying to figure things out. Um, you know, probably, uh, you know, certainly Christy Moran being one of my my favorite teachers. Um, her and and Larry Price. Um, they were um, would always challenge me and ask me about political issues and. Um, I would, we would debate back and forth every day about different things going on in the world. Um, but really what I learned in Pecanning is just to show up and work hard and mm -hmm. be a decent person. And for the most part, those few, few traits could get you by and, um, and kind of get you through when you are struggling. Yeah, that's in, it's kind of a common theme I'm hearing from many of our alumni who are doing the same thing, you know, the hard work and being pushed at school. Uh, and a lot of our students now don't get that or may not understand like this hard work is going to pay off, you know, in your time in college or in your career. So, that, yeah, I mean, I thought I was, I never thought I was the the smartest student in the world, but I uh, did well with my grades because I would work endlessly mm -hmm. i would show up and show up to <laughs> calculus every morning and try and figure out what the heck i was doing <laughs> it didn't it didn't help in the long run but i tried <laughs> i tried i think that's what counted um, it wasn't you know calculus wasn't my calling um but um that was one thing about pink conning is everybody was always willing to help you try your hardest even if you weren't naturally good at something well, and even you bringing up calculus, you know, we hear that question from students and parents, you know, how is this going to help me or where would I need to know calculus? But you had to work through a lot of problems and figure stuff out, you know, like the puzzle of what math is. Those are things that we all use in our careers, you know, figuring something out. We have a problem. What do we have to do? And those are some good skills that, you know, even if you're not the the calculus expert, you you thought you may have been in, in high school. <laughs> you're I should still add, I... I later went to grad school at the University of Michigan, uh, and I did have to know some of that for oh, grad school. Oh, did you? Uh, that awesome. and uh, a lot of it kind of translate a little bit to helping learn statistics and yeah. other math uh, areas that, candidly, I didn't think I would ever need to know because <laughs> you I did. undergrad is enough. This is my, you know, I don't need to right. go to school ever again. A few years later, um, went to the University of Michigan and and had a great experience. But again, it's uh, tough stuff and you just work mm -hmm. hard to get through it. Oh, that is great. So you kind of already alluded to this answer, but you, you said that you didn't think that you were going into politics. Um, what did you think you were going into and how did it transfer into the, the political world? Yeah, so I was trying to go into uh, psychology originally mm. when I started at Northern. Uh, I thought it'd be really nice to be able to help people dealing with different challenges and and kind of having a good perspective on the world uh, and was really excited about that idea. Uh, I later kind of realized that with politics and government, you had the ability to try and make the world a little bit better. And I, I liked this idea of spending all of my working hours, and frankly, all of my personal hours these days too, but <laughs> uh, all of my hours basically trying to make the world a better place and trying to help people 
uh, with the challenges that they might be facing, help addressing community challenges. Uh, and so once I, I realized that there, I could actually work in government and politics, it just sort of continued from there. Um, working for Congressman Stupak, uh, he offered me a, another job later on working in Washington, D.C. I worked for him until he retired from Congress and then uh, moved to Ann Arbor here to work for a congressman named John Dingell uh, 13 years ago at this point. Wow. And uh, would have never expected I'd stay and live in this community forever, but here I am. My husband yep. John and I got married last year, and awesome. uh, had the the governor officiate our wedding. Oh wow! Oh, uh, we bought great. a house last year, uh, and um, now actually just last week, John announced that he's running for city council here in Ann Arbor. Mm. So it is. Um, it's funny to go from never thinking I'd work in government or politics to. Everything. my whole world being yeah. kind of involved in government and politics. And the reason for that is that it's, it is a really great opportunity to try and do something useful and good and helpful in yeah. the world. And that's what gets us out of bed in the morning. Cool. Well, that is great. So was there something that was like the most important lesson that you've learned in high school that still applies to you today? I think the, the most important lesson I lesson I learned was to show up, work hard, care a lot and, yeah. and and just be open to exciting opportunities if they should come. That was great. Um, is there anything you wish you did differently in high school now that where you're at now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really, uh, things have worked out better than I mm -hmm. could have ever imagined in high school. So I, I should probably say no, everything was perfect. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I would say looking back is I really wish I had uh, stressed less and worried mm -hmm. less and made sure, found that careful balance between working really hard and pushing myself, but also taking more time to enjoy the time yeah. that I have. Um, because I remember being very stressed quite often in school, which is a natural part of it, but um, it's it all seems to work out okay in the end. And so I really wish I would have, um, yeah, it's a, a minor change I would make, but just right, you know, yeah. tried to be slightly less stressed and enjoy the time at school because it really is a great time of life being in high school. Yeah, yeah it is great. Um is there anything, that's all the questions that I have now, but is there anything that you would like to tell our students or our community um, about the work that you do that we may not know, that we may not realize about, you know, working in government? Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing I would say is that um, if students are interested in government, um, they should feel free to, to reach out to some of us working there today. Um, I remember feeling like as some, just a kind of a lower income kid growing up in Pinconning in the middle of nowhere that um, I always felt very afraid to talk to folks that mm -hmm. I deemed as important or in these important positions or having these titles. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the long run, I realized that a lot of people really do want to help give others an opportunity to to follow in their footsteps or to pursue their own dreams. And um, so I would say try to be less, um, at least for me, I was try not to be afraid to talk to people who seem otherwise important because they are regular people just yeah. living their lives as well and uh, usually want to help. So I think that's, that's the thing I would encourage is talk to people, figure out where they might be, where there might be opportunities and above all else, um, show up, get involved, work hard and, and care. And the rest seems to kind of take care of itself. Great advice. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, great talking to you. That wraps up the April edition of PASD Monthly. We will see you again in May.